It is the fin finishing up the first half of turn five, the October 15th, 1941 turn. So first off I did weather determination and the dice were about average, meaning they didn't roll the mud or the limited flight rolls, meaning it's still dry weather and full flight allowed. The Axis got the first turn. They won the first player roll and decided to go first just to salve, not get double smacked by the Russians. They And uh, how did that turn out? Turned out quite well for them. There's finally some supply points on the board and the even hopefully even though the Russians might do a double turn next turn if they felt so inclined the Axis are still possibly put themselves in a good position. Let's start with the north side of the map over here. Oh yeah, let's look at all the dead pile units. I haven't done that yet. So a lot of dead troops within the first few days. Very bloody battles. And then the Russians even more so. Especially that stack of 12-2-2 divisions. Just, ugh. The Germans are fighting, you know, losing some troops, but the Russians are losing way more. As you'd expect. So over here, what we have is... There was a precarious position where the Russians were almost getting to this headquarters unit and cutting off this entire line. The Axis recovered from that and managed to do some overrun into here. To uh, And they're actually really close to the enemy HQ, which is where that 1222 is stacked. And creating some zone of control issues actually it should be interesting to see what the Russians do here. Uh, but essentially, this uh, got some supplies down and have done some combat to drive forward a little bit. I don't think this route's going to make too much progress, but still it's good to see the Axis get ahead on this for them. Over here... Eh, it's the same old, same old. It's just really three pieces against three pieces. And it doesn't seem like there's much investment of forces to go for the swamp fights here. But in a more busy place, down to Reziv, which I'm going to mispronounce forever, sorry. Railheads have finally convened into a town right there where that 510 HQ is. And the Axis are now have kind of like a pincer going, where the Russians are retreating, sure, but then a bunch of Axis units drove up here between the infantry, releasing using uh, some reserve tactics to speed up forward into this front. In addition, the some uh, motorized infantry from the Seventh Panzer here have decided to cut off some supply lines and. So essentially Reziv is cut off from feeding these troops again in a pockets back in play relatively, except units are so close to, except because of the zone of controls exerted by a bunch of units, tree bark soup's not going to help much. So this should be an interesting, brutal situation for the Russians to deal with. They can probably make out of it. I found that despite my attempts to block enemy supply, enemies are there's a lot of flexibility for enemies to get out of a lot of heinous stuff. And down here uh, is an interesting progression. So where the six Panzer is right now, there were actually a couple of Russian stacks. They have either retreated or have been totally destroyed. Those these two hedgehog stacks right here are the last two Russians in this vicinity. And then some march to Vashnia. And in fact, there is a IGRD motorized infantry division 
right there that is blocking a bunch of stacks from being able to not only move but attack at full strength. So we're going to have so we're going to have to do some zone control shenanigans. It shouldn't be too hard for the Russians. All they need to do is move this 1111 unit right here to that hex 2625. And no real railhead progress there. Uh, the most strongest railhead progress was back into that town right there. And while people march to reserve, the Axis are convening in this center spot here, and though it was kind of close that an extender was in threatened, the Russians really got punished for that because that DG is a surrounded set of Russian tank uh, brigades, and the infantry division that was guarding some supply points is now in threat now also threatened and actually out of supply from reserve as well vashna and that's all vashna i'm not sure why i'm saying that's reserve yeah but the vashna front is going pretty well for the axis in addition i'm having a lot of units over here and what's really great is that smolensk over here finally has supply points uh, it only has two supply tokens left actually at the moment, but what's really cool is that I managed to restore a lot of low ammo people and have just enough supply points to fend off one attack at full strength, which should be fine, and more importantly have tokens left to refit aircraft, which is what I'm really hoping to save tokens for, because you, you, you have to refit aircraft before you get more supply points on the board. So essentially, I have to defend long enough without supply tokens to refit aircraft if I want to pull that off and get my Luftwaffe um, going again. So yeah, if I had to draw arrows, all of these guys would be going up here, and then they're going to spread out, maybe go to Bryansk, but probably go to Vashna, um, and try to possibly cut off supplies from, the, from behind and we'll use extenders to get farther out and railheads to slowly progress. Well, hopefully not too slowly. The idea is that the axis really blitz this at the start. I tried to do some shenanigans with cavalry right here. I do have some cavalry blocking some supply trace right here. But generally the road to, road to Bryansk is a little bit static. There might be some threatening over here if I can get supply points going for it. I'm really afraid to go low ammo again un unless I think I can take a supply dump from the Russians as the Axis. So it should be noted I used the strategy here where if you put units in reserve mode, uh, they can move a quarter of their move points in the move phase and then additional full movement allowance in the exploit phase, essentially, if you put units in reserve mode and don't use them for attack in the in the movement or combat phase, you can essentially make them move an extra 25% than they normally could, and that's a real inter interesting way to get them moving faster without having to deploy a very risky strat mode, which you can't really use if any un enemy units are close by. So I've been doing a lot of that and that's really easy for the Axis to do because they have so many reserve counters. So yeah, not much going on here. This is actually kind of a weak spot for the Axis, this one division, because that artillery battalion right there, or that artillery brigade there can really bomb the 29th motorized units right there and the Axis can't really do much about it. They don't have too much supplies to defend with so the Russians were feeling cocky they could try to attack across the river and drive back those guys and create some havoc but I don't think, I think the Axis feel confident that 
that's going to be a little bit difficult to do. Like they'd have to get gamble and get lucky to pull all of that off. So I'm trying to push my extender forward because I have a railhead going here. And so what I'm trying to do is get, I took off my extender that was in this town and moved it up here. And essentially my plan is to get a rail railroad unit to convert this track because of the fact that they can convert track they're not connected to yet. And extenders can land on that track and connect it to track that is connected via their movement points and essentially create an extended railway. So the extender is going to land right there and the railroad uh, unit is going to convert some of this double track railroad and that will be used for trace supply and I can get farther out. It'd be interesting if I could get the axis to take out a few supply areas. Namely, if I managed to take out uh, that town, or if I managed to take out certain towns, like namely those two and stuff right here, I could actually totally make Ryansk out of trace supply, and that would be really bad for Ryansk. And I wouldn't even have to fight it. But that would take a few turns of attrition that the Axis might not want to wait on. So, still have some units in reserve here, which is kind of silly because I don't have, they are track units and I don't necessarily have fuel for them. But it is what it is. I just figure I keep them around. This one out of supply unit is a Russian tank. It can't move because it can't get fuel. So it's just sitting there. It's kind of hilarious. And the Axis don't have to worry about it attacking, so they're just leaving it there. You know, just sitting, being cool. So as we go south into the enemy at the gate maps, Poltava has gotten a little bit of um, supply tokens and has used it interestingly. Essentially I've created a whole line of units going around this road, and they are doing some interesting zone of control pressing putting these guys out of supply, in addition, um, marching into Kharkov soon enough, we'll, if we can get the supply points for it. And the front here is pretty static. I'm mostly using these guys to block off uh, them from attacking these guys' flank. Though that could happen at the same time, um, the Russians move pretty slow and the Axis can just kind of speed up to Kharkov. We'll see how that goes. I am going to need to worry about this exhausted unit here. That's going to cost a few supply tokens worth of stuff to replenish his ammo. So part of this game is if you have exhausted internal stock units, you're going to have to bank on getting a lot of supplies later. The Axis really shouldn't do that. They should play a game of attrition or of um, surrounding the enemy rather than attacking them sometime. Um, I tried to get this disorganized unit destroyed or retreated because that would put the units here out of trace supply. But as it stands, this headquarters here will be able to draw is within enough hexes away from this town to not be out of supply, which is unfortunate for the Axis, but good for the Russians. They can defend that area a little bit more because they would essentially have complete control. The Axis having complete control here means they could cross the river, take that town, and just start wiping through um, this area. I did use this SS... Um, W unit to and this um, 13th Panzer infantry unit to essentially put the zone of control, which is adjacent hexes, out to put these guys out of trace supply. So that so they'll the pressure's on them and they can't get fueled either, so they're going to kind of have to worry about getting wrecked, essentially. Down here is still a stalemate because this is a major river and said major river 
is making attacking across the river kind of a null point. Really, I'm banking, no river pun intended, on these guys breaking through through this town, the city, and going down here and kind of just exploding outwards. That's the Axis plan right there, not to really attack across the river as much as defend across it. Which I think is fine. Back here, into the next to the Crimea area, got some supply points in. I realized that this counts as the enemy at the gates map, so there's a rule about rail cap where I can only rail a certain amount of uh, stuff to certain maps. Case Blue has a rail cap of zero, but and I thought this entire map counted for Case Blue, but in fact, only up to that peninsula. The rest of this is enemy at the gates. And I have two tokens, or two points worth of rail cap here, meaning I could get supply points here, meaning I could actually get some stuff in motion. I didn't use it for combat necessarily, as much as just getting supply points out for some aircraft refit. I think I did try combat here. It ended up in the loss of one of these 24-3 divisions and that's why there's only a tank there right now and that's actually a precarious spot to be in. I did use most of my aircraft on this turn and some of them aren't going to be refit but a lot of them are if the tokens don't get destroyed or and stuff. And that's really what the Axis have done this turn. Um, oh, and they also took this town of Melitopol and the thing about taking this town is they actually get a rail, a rolling stock train, which is essentially a truck that runs on railroads only. I'm not sure how that works with um, zone of control. It seems like I, I might play it that they uh, can, they don't count against rail cap or anything. I know they don't do that, but I don't. I think they function that they can just run across the rails freely as long as they don't go through enemy units because their printed movement is, in fact, um, like white, meaning it's technically leg movement, weirdly enough. It might be that it gets, that it's a negated zone of control if it works like a truck. So I'm gonna to have to look up, I'm, I'm really not sure of the rules on that, but I'll just have to figure out how I'm gonna play that when it comes up. And, these guys are in a better position now. I think the current plan is to get some uh, extension out here. These Romanian headquarters are the only things that can fuel these green um, units, the other Romanians. In other words, green units are, can only fuel, can fuel the gray units and green units. The gray headquarters, the Germans, cannot fuel the green Romanians at all, even though they're cooperating. So there's some nationality uh, issues to worry about here. So that's the Axis turn, and we'll see how things go from here. And also, as note of aircraft, trying to get um, trying to get transport aircraft to air bases that'll have. Um, supply points so that I can just start dro uh, dropping cargo into places where there's uh, air bases for units to have lying around and hopefully that'll pay off later. I've, I kind of disorganizedly placed aircraft at the start of this game but we'll see how it goes now. So that's the giant Case Blue and Good Irons but Screak 2 scenario so far and I'll finish turn 5 and see how it goes. It is the end of the October 15th, 1941 turn. The Russians have just done the cleanup of their turn. And I'll be moving into October 19th turn next. It's been a while since I've attended to this game. I had a vacation and that interrupted my play for quite some time. So I'm a little rusty on my events, but nevertheless, Let's go over what we had. The Russians um, basically managed to get all their troops back in supply bar one. Uh, there's a nice little empty circle uh, where one was, one division. 
I believe there was some aircraft bombardment to disorganize a lot of troops. We have over here um, a much less thin, a much thinner front than before for the Russians, but they're still holding on fast. Down here we have in the Rezev kind of front. Actually, the Russians managed to take out a, a 7th Panzer Infantry Division that was right about there, where that 1222 division is now. And they managed to get their truck back, which is pretty good. So, this weird string, you know, like it should look like a vertical line. You know, it should look like this. Instead, it's like this, like a bendy, and that's just weird. But the Panzers are pushing through for the Germans, and the Russians have some stuff to think about. But the fact that the Russians are kind of hiding in these forest areas is definitely helping them out. And the Panzers are low on ammo, like all of the Germans. So, the Panzer divisions, that is. So that's that. Down here I did some artillery bombardment uh, and disorganized these guys. Didn't do any combat. No, correction, I did. I tried to do some combat against the IRGD here. The IRGD decided to go into its internal stocks to have some low ammo. And these three guys ended up losing that fight mostly. And uh, instead of retreating because that would be disaster for supply lines they took some extra hits so that didn't go too well for the Vashnia yeah that's Vashnia for the Vashnia kind of area and then just all Germans there in Bryansk we had a successful combat this light tank uh, got X, the thing above it got exploit, and they tried to take out some stuff, and did. They ran away this disorganized um, SSR uh, division, and basically took out like two regiments out from there, which is pretty nice for the Russians. Down here near Kharkov. Um, let's see. Also, there was a little ring right here. I mentioned a unit that was out of supply. And see that little empty circle? That's where it was. Uh, rip, I suppose. Down here, in Kharkov area, just got some people undisorganized, and I did try to do a fight against the, uh, this disorganized unit under it is a 24-3 division, like the one right there, but that's another one. It took a step loss and stuff. The Russians, unfortunately, did take, have to take some casualties fighting that thing, even though they disorganized them with artillery and all that shenanigans, it still, uh, still was a pretty heavy, heavy hit. But the Russians did have to ex get into low internal stocks, and so they're going to have to eat a lot of uh, ammo even more than they did before, which is what's been slowing them down. So in the way, it's kind of a win for the Russians, the Germans having to eat internal stocks. No combat over here. It, it's purely defensive for the Russians right here. Um, same with this, same with this. And in Crimea... There's really nothing to say. Uh, the Russians are holding it off pretty well. So, you know, no, no advance, no problem. And the anime eyes are still here because uh, I'm ridiculous. And the plexiglass is still causing massive glare because that's eh, just what it is. So... I'll be getting back into the swing of things and rolling dice for the October 19th turn soon enough. We have so many casualties, like all of these are Axis casualties, and then over here is all the Russians, which is even more so. 
The Russians are actually really good on supply, though it turns out that our, that they actually ate through like a lot of supply in certain areas where there was heavy combat, especially with artillery fire. That eats up supply like a an at like a massive attack on a top of a massive attack. Moscow's been deploying troops through the rail lines and. Uh, we still have on the supply dump in Moscow 10 supply points and three tokens. So that's good. And I did look up the aircraft rule for um, entering aircraft. And it turns out they can enter at any friendly airbase and not just um, in a designated uh, land unit hex, which is a huge relief for Moscow's cer certain rules for Moscow. Um, and the Russians' entry of it. So, not much to say here. It's good to be back into the swing of things, and hopefully I'll get a few more turn dones before I have to clean this darn thing up.